Cold open three. Good. Blocked from behind by Oko Iguodara. it up. Lob for Iguodara. Who stopped it? Cam Jones three. Gotta hit one of these, right? Yes. Got to. Penetrates to the basket. Hey, shoots and scores. Counted it a foul. Avenues. He'll get it ahead to Sean Jones. He didn't stop it. Let's go, Sean. Another edition of Inside Marquette Basketball. I'm your host, Lance Allen, subbing in for Sophia Minnert this week. And we have the head coach of the Marquette Golden Eagles, Shaka Smart, alongside. And Shaka, uh, since we talked last, beat St. Thomas, beat Georgetown, uh, fell to Providence in the Big East opener. Your team and your guys respond well from adversity. So let's focus more on Georgetown. But after the Providence loss, it seemed like they were dialed in. What went so right, in your opinion, with that Georgetown response? This must be a TV show thing because you know most media folks they want to focus actually on the negative things. <laughs> so I'm trying uh, to be positive. No, no, I appreciate that, Lance. Uh, well, you know, let's go back to Providence. You know, our guys really wanted to play well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there wasn't a lot of conversation about this, but I think the guys really wanted to win for Tyler. You know, going home, back to Providence, uh, it being his senior year, and you know sometimes when you really want something it actually can get in the way of following the process if you're so obsessed and focused on the result. Um, so I think there was some of that there. Plus you got to give Providence a ton of credit. I mean they were on you know, level 10 with their energy and their connectivity, their crowd. Uh, you know something about that place. I mean these venues in the Big East are, are all incredibly unique but they're all you know equally intense or most of them at least. And so coming out of that game there was you know, similar to, you know, after the Wisconsin game, there was a lot of conversation, there was a lot of reflection, there was a lot of even, you know, conflict, not a lot, but some uh, amongst, you know, coaches and players and players and players, and uh, we want to play better, you know, and guys want to play better individually, and we want to win, you know, that's our expectation. And I thought the guys were razor sharp against Georgetown. I thought there was a, a healthy degree of respect for Georgetown's players and their team. They started the game seven to two. The guys didn't blink. And then it was statistically at least the best defensive game that we've played since I've been here. We had 11 kills um, and we got our hands on the basketball an incredible amount. Um, the guys really, really flew around and played well in the defensive end. Just to follow up on that defensive thing, Shaka, is yeah, shoot less than 33% for Georgetown, 5 of 25 on threes. How impressed were you with the perimeter defense and just guys getting after it? Well, we were really impressed because Georgetown's got some perimeter guys that can get going, and uh, we, we did not want to allow them to be efficient. You know, we always tell our guys with the other team's best players, make them inefficient. And the guys did that in the first half. And then, as we know, sometimes there's a tendency when you have a lead at halftime to take your foot off the gas a little bit, but then they did it again in the second half. But you also have Christmas, and you also have finals week, and you also have a lot of stuff that have happened you know, since we talked last. How was Christmas for you? How were the holidays for the guys? And how did everything kind of go down? Well, let's see. Since last time we talked, we uh, had our holiday party. Mm -hmm. So I think I told you mm -hmm. we had a little uh, Christmas karaoke, which was interesting. You know, we kind of broke our guys up into position groups, uh, plus the walk-ons had a group and they all performed in front of everybody. Let's just say that uh, we'll stick with school and basketball as our <laughs> primary No American pursuits. Idol or no, no voice. Or I don't another. think anyone will be going on those shows. Although America's got talent. David Joplin has certainly has the most singing talent on our team, but I'll take him as a, a, a scorer, particularly the way he played against Georgetown. So guys at exams. Uh, did a nice job. We finished up the semester with the best GPA we've ever had here, uh, going back uh, at least the 20 years that uh, Adrian Ridgeway, our, our head academic advisor, has been here. Uh, Adrian uh, and her staff did a phenomenal job with our guys, and then the guys really, you know, they, they hit it out the park this semester. We had almost a 3.4 team grade point average, mm -hmm. 15 guys over a 3.0. Stevie Mitchell again with a 4.0 uh, in some really, really tough classes. Five A's too, like five classes, five A's for Stevie Mitchell. Incredible. That's 4.0, Lance. Yeah, it is. Five <laughs> A's. <laughs> I'm a journalism major, so you know, the math is, it gets a little difficult, but. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, I, I never, you know, want to take him for granted because he, he's such a, a machine. And, you know, it's a, it's a high bar here at Marquette, particularly 
You know, he's in the school of business. He's a double major, finance and information systems. Uh, so he's as impressive as they come. You can tell I never got a 4.0 with my math skills and stuff <laughs> like that, but you know what I mean. That, That's that okay. Is, that is very, very impressive. It really is. And then the other thing that I noticed, Shaka, is sometimes you have a good feel for your team. You always all pretty much have a good feel for your team, but you mentioned in one of the post games that it's a good time for a break. Why is it a good time for a break now, and then you kind of put it into fourth or fifth gear or whatever analogy you want to use going forward? Well, I think, you know, listening to some of the other coaches around the country, there's other teams that are in the same boat as us. Sometimes we get in our own little Marquette bubble and we think that everything's so unique to us, but it's really not. I think when you add it all up, you know, the guys have uh, put in an incredible amount of work since the start of the season and even going prior to that, since the start of the school year and what they did over the summer. Uh, haven't had a lot of breaks. Um, and then the academic load gets heavier and heavier as you get towards the end of the semester. You know, you enter conference play right there, right as the semester's ending. Uh, there's a higher level of stress and intensity that goes along with that. And so, you know, you can feel uh, for the guys, uh, there's just a natural human nature to, you know, kind of look forward to getting a couple days off. You know, I'm different. I was, I was in here on Christmas Day. You know, I, I miss practice, uh, but, you know, these guys really deserve and need, you know, a few days away because it, it's incredibly intense, you know, what we're asking our guys to do and the level of play that you have to be at to, to succeed in this conference. I think we touched on it and you mentioned the Big East atmosphere at opposing venues, but your venue, it's a fortress. You know, the Pfizer Forum, I mean, 18 in a row, fourth longest streak, home streak in the NCAA. You got to love the fact that you, you can't just roll the ball out there and expect to win, but that place does help you. And I don't know if it's points, I don't know if it's at, attitude, whatever, but it definitely helps your team. Well, I think that, first of all, playing at home helps almost every team. And then you add on top of it our fans, our atmosphere. The fact that we get to play in a world-class arena, the guys, we all really, really appreciate that. You know, as coaches, we've been at different schools. And when you walk into an arena that everybody takes great pride in and everybody appreciates, that, I don't know if you can put a point total on that, but that, that's certainly, uh, it's a great feeling and it makes you, you, you appreciative uh, of that dynamic. Uh, but make no mistake about it, and I tell the guys this all the time, our job is to lead by giving energy to everyone that comes to watch us play, and then that energy will be reciprocated. We can't just depend on the crowd to get us fired up. You know, we, we have to make sure that we are the initial domino uh, in that dynamic, and I thought the guys did that against Georgetown. Shaka Smart's interview is presented by Wintrust, Wisconsin's bank the official banking partner of Marquette University. Golden Eagles fans, open a Marquette checking account with Wintrust Wisconsin's Bank today and score golden perks like a $50 opening bonus, free ATMs nationwide, and your very own exclusive MU Golden Eagles debit card. Wrap the blue and gold at home or on the road. And don't miss this golden opportunity to let everyone know... Scan now to open your account today. We trust Wisconsin's bank. Proud to be the official bank of Marquette University. After a serious injury, you'll need an experienced team on your side. Call Gruber Law Offices today. Proud partner of Marquette Athletics. One call, that's all. We live for the moments that move us. The big ones, the small ones the ones that light up our hearts. At Aurora Healthcare, our heart and vascular team is trusted to make more moments possible. With breakthrough treatments only found here and the region's top-ranked heart program, we're the first choice of referring physicians and patients. Enjoy more moments that move you with Wisconsin's number one heart care. Back on Inside Marquette Basketball with the head coach Shaka Smart. And Shaka, we always like to highlight some of the players that maybe they don't always get the spotlight, but they've played really well of late. And one of those guys, Ben Gold, three of three on threes against the Hoyas, and it just seemed like he was more in the flow than he's been maybe all year. Well, Ben is a really talented player. We're super excited about his growth. These guys, you know, you bring them in and you, you kind of can project what they can be. 
uh, but sometimes they're the last ones to see it. So uh, we, you know, have spent a lot of time with Ben trying to help him understand how good we think he can be. And he's starting to scratch the surface of that. Uh, obviously, his outside shooting is a heck of a weapon, particularly at that size, 6'10", but he can do much, much more than that. He rebounded the ball really well in that game. He's someone that's getting better on the defensive end. He can put the ball down on the floor. He's good at creating action with his teammates. So he's a guy that we think is getting better and better. Tyler Kolick with his sixth career double-double, second this year, 13-10. and 10. I imagine it makes your life a lot easier when that guy's dishing it, but he's also looking for a shot and just controls the flow of the game. Well, the pass is contagious, and it definitely starts with him. And also, those guys just have a knack for finding their teammates and making the pass on time, on target. I was actually watching LeBron James uh, on Christmas Day, and, you know, he's the best at it maybe ever. Um, you know, drawing def defenders and then hitting your teammate in the chin. As I tell our players all the time, if you hit him in the chin, he's probably gonna catch it. Uh, but it just gives a guy a rhythm into his shot. And Tyler Oso, we're so grateful to have them leading the way for our team in that way. You mentioned it in the first segment, so we're gonna follow up in segment two, is you challenged David Joplin and he responded. Offensive rebounds, nine uh, rebounds in that game against Georgetown, which is a career high. And I think it helped his offense as well, Shaka, if I'm not mistaken, with 20 points. Maybe just explain what went into his thought process. It helped back. his offense, it helped his defense. You know, it's such a fine line because, you know, as we say in our program, there's two wings of the Golden Eagle. There's, you know, holding ourselves to a championship standard. Coach Lombardi said, you know, striving for perfection. But then the other wing is, charging the guy's batteries so that they feel good enough about themselves to go perform in, in pressure-packed moments. And if you haven't played or coached, it may be tough for you to understand that balance. But if you think about it this way, if every day you're berated because you're not perfect, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then on Saturday, you might not have the energy or the stamina, or you might not feel good enough about yourself to even strive to be perfect. And so that's the balance that we strike. Um, we've all had coaches over the years that maybe err on one side or err on the other side. Uh, with Jop, you know, I, I kind of made the decision that you know, I was really gonna challenge him going into that Georgetown game. I just feel like and felt like uh, for us to max out and be our best, we need more from Jop. So I challenged him in front of the whole team. I said, man, you got it in you. Do it for your teammates. Your team needs you. And you could tell from the beginning, he just had a, a fire in his eye. And it carried over the defense. He had a tough matchup on uh, Dontre Styles and did a heck of a job on him. It carried over to defensive rebounding. And it carried over to the way he approached offense, which, you know, we're believers in. You know, if you, anything you do is everything you do. So if you approach something with all out intensity, it's gonna bleed over to the other parts of the game. And it wasn't just Jop uh, Shaka in the sense that when you reviewed the film of Providence, what did you see offensively that you challenged all your guys to be better offensively against Georgetown? Well, get the shots we want first and foremost. We felt like there was a little bit of impatience mm -hmm. taking some shots uh, that were okay shots, but not great shots. And then some of the finishing around the basket needed to be better. And, uh, we still can continue to improve in that way. You know, Cam Jones actually, uh, as everybody knows, is our best scorer, but he's a heck of a finisher around the basket. Right now, uh, his numbers are a little down in that specific area of the game, and we need to keep working to help him grow and improve. Uh, but that's what's exciting. It's late December. We have a ch chance to keep growing. Uh, we're going to head into you know the meat of conference play here, and the teams that continue to improve both collectively, but then also individual guys on those teams, those are the teams that are gonna really do some damage in this league. Collective response, I like that term. What goes into that for Marquette? What goes into that for you? As well, that was our game theme, you know, coming off of Providence and response for us and our program is your ability to focus on the next most important thing. And if you go in our practice gym, you can see it up on a wall in big letters. Uh, Jay Wright's Villanova's teams, it was attitude. So for us, it's response. And 
I just believe it's a great life lesson that we can teach these guys through basketball during the four years that they're here. There's going to be a lot of twists and turns, ups and downs. There's going to be, you know, times where people love you. There's going to be times where people are critical of you. Uh, and there's going to be days you don't feel as good about yourself. The key is your response. And I thought that coming off of the Providence game, uh, it was a good time to really reemphasize our collective response. And as we tell our guys, the team response is made up of each guy's individual responses, but we also have to help each other. So it's not like each guy's in a vacuum. So it's both a very much an individual thing where you have to bring your best and also a team thing where we have to all help each other. And I thought the guys did a nice job of that. Inside Marquette Basketball is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare, helping you to live fully. We live for the moments that move us. The big ones, the small ones, the ones that light up our hearts. At Aurora Healthcare, our heart and vascular team is trusted to make more moments possible. With breakthrough treatments only found here and the region's top-ranked heart program, we're the first choice of referring physicians and patients. Enjoy more moments that move you with Wisconsin's number one heart care. There are many software, cloud, and technology providers, but there's only one who brings it all together to move business forward. Software One. Because no one else can act on software and cloud intelligence like we do. End-to-end, side-by-side, building better outcomes. All in one. Software One. Hands up! Get your hands up! Hands up! Big shot! Stunt! Load! Go stunt! Yeah, go home! Good, Cam! Good job! Run! Run! The theme for tonight was attack mode. Um, and, you know, I think our guys did a great job of carrying that over. You know, I thought they came out and they were ready to play tonight and had good energy and good pop, but St. Thomas is good. You know, I, like that is legitimately like a first round NCAA tournament game that you go and you play and, and man, it's just, a, it's a war. Coach Tower has been there for 20 plus years now. I think they won national championships as a division three team. So we knew it was going to be a heck of a challenge. The thing with, with teams like that, they move the ball incredibly well. They're really smart, so they present a lot of challenges to you. And they got a toughness and a culture of winning. That, you know, our guys respected that and they understood it. Like, they're going to keep coming. They're not going to, you know, you get up 10 or 12 or whatever. A program like that, they're just going to keep responding and keep chipping away. And, you know, it's an awesome learning experience for us. We've been year three with him now, and the growth that he's made year in and year out, and even now, like even in season right now, he just continues to get better. And I think a big part this year for him is the basketball stuff, yes, and he puts a lot of time in that every single day, working on hooks, both hands, his touch shots and all that. I'm excited to see where it goes from here on out. Ben is, you know, he's had an up and down summer and, and kind of recovering from injury, but you know, a lot of people think he's just a shooter, but he's so much more than that. A big area for him, for us, is defensively. Good, Ben, good job. You know, sometimes he doesn't trust himself all the way, and, and he's got incredible ability. Like Oso, you know, he can do all the same stuff Oso can do. I just think he has to believe that, and we've got to continue to help him with that. Good, Ben, get back. You know, the versatility that they have on both ends of the floor is unique. You know, you just don't see guys like that together out there that can handle the ball, make decisions, obviously Ben shooting. So it's, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, tonight we had Ben, Oso, and Jop out there together. So you're 6'8", 6 6'10", 6 6 and that just, you know, it gives you a little bit more length. Hey, Jop, Jop, you sense what I'm saying? When they're running a the hit, like, you got to be ready because they'll cut back, cut it, too. That's when they got you. I think he thought they were going, he was calling square. He's back cut to the rim. And that's the great thing about our roster is, like, there's literally not one person that can't play with somebody else. That's through recruiting. That's, you know, we're very intentional about that. So, yeah, it's fun. Fun watching them out there together. Talk, talk, keep talking. Stay shot, load. Load, get pulled over. Stay down, jump. Good head, good load. Stay still. 
Be ready, be ready. Martinelli has a knock stolen oh, yeah. away. It's showtime. The Hammer with Chase Ross. I think this is the first time I've been coaching for 17, 18 years. This is literally the first time that I've ever been a part of playing a game during finals. That was different in itself. You know, coach did an awesome job. Like he's, he's very open and transparent with these guys and like, hey, you know, this is where we are. This is what we're dealing with. You know, finals week is it's stressful. I mean, for any student, you know, and obviously student athletes, and, you know, the body can't really determine what's, what stress is what stress. So, you know, our guys did a really good job of, of handling it. Let's go, hunt up, finish this game, finish this round right here. Nine and two coming out of non-conference and the Big East, it's like SEC football. I grew up in Mississippi and like, you know, it's just kind of way of life down there, but that's what it is in the Big East and it's awesome. It's very, you know, it's exciting. I know our guys are looking forward to it. And, you know, the biggest thing and, and, and coach really hammers home with our guys about just staying in the present moment. And, you know, for us, like, can we be the best version of us? Then, you know, we like our chances, but I mean, every night is literally going to be a war, so. It's awesome though, it's what you want. Great piece mic'd up with Neil Barry and Shaka. What do your assistants mean to you and guys that are working with the bigs or doing certain things or setting a tone with certain portions of your team? Our staff's incredibly important. You know, I was an assistant coach and on different coaching staffs for 10 years. And I learned while I was an assistant that if you don't have a great staff, you don't have much of a chance. And we're fortunate here. Number one, we've had really good continuity. We're in our third year of our program here at Marquette. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of our assistants have stayed. Uh, they've all learned uh, together what can be effective here. Uh, and then we've all continued to evolve as a group. Uh, Neil Berry, DeAndre Haynes, Cody Hatt, Nevada Smith, those guys do the, you know, the lion's share of um, you know, whether it's game preparation, individual workouts with the guys, um, they all lead position groups. Um, you know, Neil works with, they're, they're not the bigs anymore, they're the forwards. Mm. And they actually call themselves the big guards, the BGs. But College basketball sometimes can be so transitional and you gotta, you gotta adapt and whatever, but having a staff that's been around for a long time, that's gotta be a huge plus for you. It is a huge plus. I mean, if you look at some of the best programs in the country, that's one thing they have going for them is continuity, assistant coaches sticking around for, for long enough. But at the same time, those guys, most of them at least, have aspirations to become head coaches and you certainly want to help them in that regard. Inside Marquette Basketball is presented by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. After a serious injury, you'll need an experienced team on your side. Call Gruber Law Offices today, a proud partner of Marquette Athletics. One call, that's all. Golden Eagles fans, open a Marquette checking account and score perks like a $50 opening bonus, free ATMs nationwide, and your very own Golden Eagles debit card. Rep the blue and gold everywhere. Win Trust, Wisconsin's bank, the official bank of Marquette University. We live for the moments that move us. The big ones, the small ones, the ones that light up our hearts. At Aurora Healthcare, our heart and vascular team is trusted to make more moments possible. With breakthrough treatments only found here and the region's top-ranked heart program, we're the first choice of referring physicians and patients. Enjoy more moments that move you with Wisconsin's number one heart care. Inside Marquette Basketball is presented by Wintrust, Wisconsin's bank, the official banking partner of Marquette University. Aurora Healthcare, helping you to live fully. And by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Marquette fans, we would like to wish you a happy 2024. Happy New Year's, Marquette fans. We're wishing you a happy 2024. Happy, happy New, New Year's, Year's Marquette, Marquette fans. fans. On behalf of Marquette Basketball, we're wishing you a happy 2024. Last segment of Inside Marquette Basketball. I'm Lance Allen subbing in for Sophia Minert. Shaka's probably happy about that. Sophia will be back in the future. And Shaka, you have a huge game coming up. Creighton sold out. National audience, CBS. 
How does that get the juices flowing? And I know every game is a big game for you, and you got to focus on every game, but this has got to be extra special for all involved. Well, first of all, you're a good sub, Lance. We appreciate well, you appreciate being that. here. You Thank you. I, I think uh, for us, coming back off of Christmas, uh, it's really important to you know, get back together. Uh, you have a chance for a little bit of a reset, a reminder mm -hmm. internally, why are we here? What are we here to do? What are we going after? How do we best help each other accomplish our goals collectively? And then, by the way, you've got one of the top teams in the league coming in to our arena uh, in Creighton, and we've had some absolute wars with them. Uh, as a group, it still starts with our energy, our connectivity, uh, our willingness to fly around on the defensive end. They do a heck of a job shooting the ball from outside. We've got to really contest shots. And again, bring the level of energy and uh, intensity that our crowd feeds off so that we can feed off of them and it can be reciprocal all game long because that does make a big difference. We haven't talked recruiting much on this show, but you will have two signees, Demarius Owens as well as Royce Parham, that will be in attendance. And how are those two doing and what does that do for them to kind of soak up that atmosphere, so to speak, of Marquette? They're doing great. Uh, they actually play on the same team now, uh, Royce, I decided to transfer to Western Reserve Academy where Demarius uh, previously went. So now they're teammates and roommates. They live uh, in the dorm together, which is unbelievable preparation for college because they're gonna have such a head start in terms of their relationship. Uh, but they're two guys that have a very bright future here at Marquette. Uh, two of the better players that we've signed since we've been here. They both have good size. Uh, they're both guys that can put the ball in the basket, but can also do different things on the court. Anytime you can bring a guy in for a, particularly a Big East game, and he can get a sense for what the dynamic is, what the environment is, the intensity of the game, the preparation going into the game with practice and shoot around, it's really, really important. And, and it gives him a real sense for what he's getting himself into and some of the things he needs to start getting ready for. These bigger games, you always see former players show up as well. And I always kind of tease some of the older guys that I know, like, oh, yeah, you just show up for the big ticket items and stuff like that. But it's got to be also reassuring for your guys, you to look down and see former Marquette players that are definitely supporting you and what's going on. The former players and former coaches at Marquette are the ones who built this program and made it what it is today. I mean, we're sitting here in the Al McGuire Center. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone that contributed to this program is part of what made it special, and we love that they come to five serve and support us. Well, we love you doing this show, so Shaka, thanks for the time once again. Thank you, Lance. All right, no problem. Inside Marquette Basketball with head coach Shaka Smart. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation from Learfield.